This is just basically an update on our experience. No? Um, so this is basically the benefit of three years of running a motorcycle taxi operation and also what transpired during the pilot and our learning. So this is not in any way prejudice. Um, the new guidelines or, or, uh, or anything to that effect. Okay, so next slide. So basically, we've been operating for three years. Um, of course, our operations has been sporadic because of our uh, constant uh, you know, fight uh, or journey for regulation. Um, so over the course of the three years, we've trained close to about 100,000 fiber applicants. So we've been training na to. Um, and of the 20, 120,000 roughly, we ended up about with 26,478. So this is over time. We ended up 36,797, but because of planning, because of issues with the compliance, etc., etc., over time, of course, of the three years, it means that the drop off by the motorcycle taxis, um, basically, we deactivate about 10,000. So roughly, our failure rate on average is 63%, no? almost uh, 70%. So we back that. So basically, you know, um, we've really taken great pains to develop this uh, training program and to really find a screening process that will be able to really get the best bikers. That's why our failure rate is so uh, high. And imagine, guys, we've built 27,000 fleet of bikers uh, over three years. So this is something that we really want to stress out, that it's going to be very difficult to really build a competent and safety fleet um, over a short period of time. So uh, we take caution in really building up our base uh, for, this particular, uh, uh, for this particular type of operations. Next. So for the pilot transport statistics, we had over 5 million rides um, over the last six months. Um, so we've had total of 3 million downloads over the 3 years. Um, actually, Maria, 3 years, well, I guess uh, this is just for the pilot. I think it's 3 years over time. Um, and then we have a 0.003% accident rate. So one of the major, major um, KPIs of the initial pilot was safety. Now, if you look at the MC pilot guidelines in the beginning, the threshold was 5%. For all operators, yan, um, today in the future, ideally, you know, na yung threshold ng, ng uh, accidents mo must be 5%. So we're happy to. So na yung challenge kami ng uh, PWG na kaya ba yung magu hold up ba yung 0.003% mo over time. Because back then, during the injunction phase, we're only operating for four months. So uh, in the pilot phase, we were given the chance to operate for six months, um, and we're happy to hear, uh, we're happy to share that we've actually held it. Means that we're not affected by the point zero zero two percent, but on average we're at point zero zero three. Um, zero fatalities. Um, so a lot of it, majority of it, is actually bruises, uh, but there are some major fractures, um, unfortunately. Hello. Next. Um, so because of the degree or the kind of injuries or accidents that befall a motorcycle, um, we were forced to create a 24-hour emergency medical response team. Now, why is this very important? Alam niyo, pag nabangga po ang kotse, malaking possibility na wala pong mangyayari sa tao. Siguro 9 out of 10 times, unless talagang malungha yung accidents. But even the smallest, uh, the most minor type of accident in a motorcycle may result to injury. Uh, even sometimes, na wala nang yari sa yo, baka may internal bleeding, and it could lead to certain complications. So that's really the nature of the motorcycle, no? Because it's exposed. Um, so there's inherent vulnerabilities to the motorcycle. So basically, we've created an emergency medical response team so that we can. Upon knowing about it, no? upon getting the call um, and verifying, we get, we're get able to get to the accident in 30 minutes response time. So at least um, within 30 minutes, we're able to get there. Um, it, this is important because back then when we were operating, diba, and we were heavily reliant on insurance, heavily reliant on third party enforcers, heavily reliant on medical responders, um, you cannot 
you cannot establish and guarantee the SLA set. So we have to build our own internal team, no? So the problem really with motorcycles, and I'm sorry to say this, no, with no with due respect to everybody, but a problem sa hospital and there are sino nang motorcycle dito, I'm sure you guys have had experience. Pag nagmo-motorcyclo ka at aksidente ka punta sa ospital, medyo hindi ka pinapansin. And pinsan humingi pa ng down payment and sometimes you're turned away because there's no GL and there's no capacity to pay. Um, so this has become an issue for us, not that we don't pay, but then pagdating ng pasyente namin dati doon, ilang oras bago sila mabigyan ng medical attention. And only then when we arrive um, that they're given medical attention. So we've had to build that team so that we can provide quality care for these unfortunate instances. No? So it's really proper treatment, minimal stress, and faster recovery. So the, the more inmates you have in the hospital, the worse it could be for you. And also, ikaw na ayun na dihado, ikaw si stress, di ba? Hindi mo naman kaya mag-sign ang forms ng sarili mo. Next. So how do we do this? Hello. Hello. So how do we do this? Next slide, please. Uh, yung accident medical network namin has about a network of 48 EMR trained responders. This is emergency medical responders, no? These are trained uh, responders to stabilize uh, patients, uh, med uh, injuries outside, no? Um, and then provide them with medical care. And then they prefer defibrillators, they're, they're uh, trained to do so. These are certified by the Philippine College of Emergency Medicine, American Heart Association, Twin Hospital uh, Trauma Life Support, Tactical Emergency Consulting uh, Care, uh, Medic First Aid USA, and Emergency Tech to make Meter 911. So these are the certifications of our EMR. We also have 12 on-call doctors, and this is a combination of emergency medicine, trauma, orthopedic, and surgery. And we have eight affiliate hospitals. So, yung, yung, yung team namin is led by very, very highly qualified uh, medical directors and training and trainers. The reason for this is we need to have these types of connections with the uh, hospitals so that when our patients get in there, there is no down payment. If you need to get surgery right then and there, pag ang cast biker o ang cast passenger ka, diretsyo yun, no questions asked. Of course, you know, it's not always 100% guaranteed, but you have that level of expectation uh, with us. Um, so this is something that we've really built over the last three years, and we hope that, you know, uh, all other uh, motorcycle taxi operators and providers will, you know, strive to develop as well. And of course, we are here and we are open. Uh, to help uh, the entire industry, you know, get to this point. So, sana we can be compliant with this very high level of standard of medical care. Next. Okay, so, basically, what we've been negotiating over the last, I think, six months, no? even before the pilot happened, especially with uh, the Committee of Public Services and Senate, was we really, uh, move motorcycle taxis to be recognized by the consortium insurance. So by law kasi as a public utility vehicle, kailangan mo kumuha ng insurance dun sa consortium. So there are two consortium, which is PAMI and SSCI. So this is a uh, consortium or a combination of all the private insurers, large and mid-size, uh, put together to provide insurance coverage to uh, the public utility vehicles or the passengers of the public utility vehicles. Now, why is this important? If I put the level of SLA na consortium insurance, then sa private insurance. Kasi pag private insurance ka, medyo may kaya ka eh. Uh, or you're a private insurer, uh, insurance holder, no? So, you can advance uh, and then you can wait. So, roughly on average, it takes about five months, no? For you, al alam niyo naman to eh, sinong na-accidente sa inyo uh, before, di ba? May mga claims yan eh. So, it takes a lot some time to be able to uh, get the claims. No, and not all claims are are sorry. Right. Not all claims are um, also recognized. No, the reason for this is, sure, major mass market po yung market natin. Eh. Yung biker natin kompleto yan. Meron yung driver's license na professional. Meron yung mga papers. Pero yung pasahero is not always the case, de So, major mahirap pa complete requirements. 
a hundred percent. Right? So this is the problem with private insurance. So really our hope and wish is for the Philippine uh, uh, Insurance Commission to really recognize, even now, na wala pang law, no, while even at the pilot stage, you recognize na yung motorcycle taxi na pwede bigyan ng coverage ng consortium insurance so that we can all um, have you know a much bigger coverage platform um, and infrastructure. So in lieu of this, Okay, uh, because uh, uh, for serious accidents in motorcycle, you need immediate medical attention, right? Diba? And if you're gonna re rely on the private insurance companies, it will take some time. Um, so next slide. So basically, ang tasa sa accident fund. So we have a dedicated fund to advance payments for accidents. Um, you know, it took. It took a while for me to convince our management to actually publicize this, no? but I think it's very, very important. Um, this may be to the detriment of my company because now they know that we advance all payments, no questions asked. However, I think you know because of uh, public safety, kailangan po talagang malaman ng lahat ng operators that this is the level of standard that you have to subject yourself in. Because uh, um, the, the accidents in a motorcycle may be potentially grave. Maybe. Uh, um, whether it's a small accident or a big accident, there's a high likelihood, high chance. No? So in rare cases, we even go beyond the insurance coverage um, in selected cases no? uh, of uh, uh, depending on case to case basis. And we also provide discretionary assistance. So sometimes this goes beyond just the medical reimbursement and just whatever the dismember and death benefits uh, uh, are provided for. No? The idea here is, marami nang sasabi pag sumakay ka ng motor, and this is no deference to my motorcycle friends, we all know this, pag sumakay ka ng motor, yung isang paa mo nakabawad na sa, sa buhay. And stress na nga yung ating pamamayan sa trabaho nila, sa buhay nila. Nakikipagsapa na rin sila buwis buhay po na sumakay ng motosiklo. Pag may nangyari po dyan, kahit isa, dapat po, pati yung, dapat po, hindi na ma-extend yung stress nila doon. Kasi they're already incapacitated if something happens to them for, for their daily work. And we, sh we as the provider of, of, of this, uh, operator of this, must ensure that we minimize and mitigate the stress levels that we have to go through. Kawawa po yung pasahero. So dapat bigyan po natin ang pansin at seryosohin po natin yung operasyon um, at lalong lalo na po so para natin pag-handle yung mga accident. Next. Um, so, training is one thing, and I think we have really built a very good training program specific po for billion, no? yung pasahero. Marami po kasi eskwelahan dito sa Pilipinas, actually konti lang, hindi marami, na nagtuturo paano magmotor. Pero kailangan po yung turuan paano magsakay ng pasahero. But it doesn't stop on training. And we've had this, we experienced this with great pains over the last few years. Yung mindset po talaga mahila po yan uh, palitan, di ba? Yung pinakala, pinalakihan po natin, nagawain po natin na bad habits, hindi po yan na nasusulba at nakukuha sa isang training, sa full training, di ba? Nakukuha po yan sa uh, mindset change, no? culture change. Um, in fact, that's, I think, what we are very proud of with Akas, that we've imparted the culture change to how the motorcycle biker accords himself when he wears the uniform. So just to give you some stats on the six-month pilot, no? on a daily basis, we assist about 360 bikers. Daily po yan, bumukod na sa opisina for whatever um, psychological, uh, 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 practical customer service uh, and commercial requirements they would need. No? Uh, over the six months pilot, we've had 50 field uh, retraining activities no? uh, that would retrain the bikers. And just during the pilot program alone over six months, we've retrained uh, and uh, counseled over 20,000 bikers. That's two-thirds of our fleet. No? So tuloy-tuloy po yan eh. Hindi po yun sa stop sa training. So you really need to build an infrastructure of community managers, uh, counselors, to make sure that 
um, you know, hindi nila makalibutan yung, yung, yung training nila. And to make sure na yung pakikisama nila and yung culture change na, no, on how they afford themselves in the motorcycle. Na dati, medyo talaga, admittedly, wala silang pakialam. Hindi dahil wala silang pakialam dahil hindi, they don't know any better. But as we all know, we all have our bad habits. Sigarilyo lang po, di ba mahirap po na tanggalin kung nakasanayan ka. So tuloy tuloy lang po yan. Next. So ang trainers po natin, I'm happy to announce, no? Uh, we've leveled up our training uh, the setup, no? Our trainers are trained by a US firm that trains the US Marines. Um, they also train, so this is for motorcycle taxi, ah, hindi, hindi, hindi military training. All, only for motorcycle uh, safety uh, mindset and safety riding. Now, there's, I'll give you guys a stat, no? Um, Marines na puto in the United States, no? In 2006, um, more U.S. Marines were killed on a motorcycle than in battle. Okay? I spoke to some generals recently, and this is the same issue with the Philippine Army, right? The reason for this is, okay, you Marines, U.S. Marines, trained po yan over and over and over para mangyera. So, lumakas po yung loob nila, tumapak po sila, pero yung lakas ng loob nila, ang tapak, tapak nila sa gera is well trained. So ngayon, ilipat ko yung tapang at lakas ng loob yun sa motorcyclo na wala pong training that leads to a disaster. Which is why we got this US firm. Incidentally, itong US firm na puto also handles the uh, licensing uh, uh, training for California, which is one of the most progressive motorcycle uh, regu regulatory uh, states uh, or, 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 or areas, locations in the world. No? And also Pennsylvania, they're also one of the largest. So you can park on the motor vehicles na sila po yung nag-handle ng safety training po ng lahat na kumukuha ng licensya ng motorcycle. Of course, lahat po ng trainers natin is trained by the Philippine National Police Highway Patrol Group. Ito po yung natawag nila MRST, Motorcycle Riding Safety Training. Next. Okay. Um, so, basically, if you look at this, no, uh, I want to explain. Okay, talawa ka tayo. The, I want to explain once and for all two things, no? the cap and the dynamic pricing. Ito po yung tinatawag natin na, uh, so the cap, the fair matrix, and the dynamic pricing. Ito po yung tatlong gusto kong i-impart sa inyo, just based on our experience po as running a motorcycle operator and also from the experiences that we've read no, from abroad for like Uber, Lyft, uh, Gojek, uh, Grab, um, and whatnot. No? So, um, this new ride-sharing economy po kasi, hindi po yan parang uh, taxi or parang jeepney. Na pag gumawa po kayo ng practice ng taxi, yung, ta yung use po ng, ng, ng vehicle, 24 oras, so pinapalitan po natin yun ng driver. So, tuloy-tuloy lang po yun sa lahat. Uh, ang ride-sharing economy po, yung basihan po ng ride-sharing economy is the combination of part-timers um, and full-timers. So, marami po sa ride-sharing economy, anywhere from 70 to 90 percent, are part-timers. Meaning, uh, magpapakay sila, may trabaho sila iba, minsan magkatrabaho sila, minsan hindi. Right? So, it's up to them. Meron din po tayong full-timers na talaga kumaasa po sa motorcycle taxi or dun sa ride-sharing economy para po, mag, para po magpasada at hindi po talaga yung main business nila. So that being said, if you have a cap of X number, no, let's say 30,000, the bikers that are actually out of the streets when you need them is much, much less. Right? Hindi po siya buong 30,000 na sa daan. In fact, Yung, kaya po, nakikita niyo po yung first bump, again, yung morning peak, no? from 6 to 10. Yung second bump natin po, that is uh, the evening peak, from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Ang, ang, uh, so, so, ang ginagawa po ng maraming operators is we give incentives, di ba? Uh, we give, uh, you know, to the drivers para pagdating ng peak, lahat kayo pumunta doon. Kasi marami po dyan, syempre, pag traffic, di ba? Lalo na po pag kotse, pag motor, ganun din po. Pag traffic, ay, ayaw ko na lumabas. 
di ba? Marami rin sa kanila, galing office, pupunta doon ay mapamasada. Eh marami rin talagang full part-timers na talagang nag-a-add jobs at lumarakin. So all of that, you need to make sure that you incentivize them that during the time that you need it the most, which is the most traffic areas, which is a few hours in the morning, about 3 to 4, and a few hours at night, they need to appear at those times because that's where they're needed. So you have to provide those incentives. So it's uh, I wanted to debunk the myth, no? So if you have this much cap, the, the, the motorcycles out on the streets is very, very minimal. It's very little, depending on how you incentivize them to come out. Next. So if you're looking at the current demand and supply uh, graph right now, right? let's say this is the existing capacity that we're supplying because based on based on our uh, estimates, parang lumalabas po ng kasama yung Facebook, kasama yung habal-habal, parang mga 200,000 a day po yung motorcycle operate, uh, motorcycle rides, right? So let's say you're providing this much demand, no? Uh, at a certain cap. Kasi nga, sinasabi ko po, hindi lahat ng motorcycle lumalabas um, 100%. So konti lang po yung lumalabas. Yung full-timers nyo, which is the core, right? And then, ino-augment po yan ng part-timers. Next, if you lower the supply, if you lower the cap, then the supply significantly goes lower. Which is the reason I just want to, uh, again, no, um, we want to work with the LTFRB and ito ay study at pag-aaral, so we want to share our learnings with everybody na it is exacerbated na if you have a cap on every single provider, depending on the popularity of the provider and the demand generated and the awareness generated of the different provider, hindi po siya pare-pareho. So meron po tayo providers that with super high demand, meron tayo in, in low supply, meron tayo providers with high supply and less demand, and so on and so forth. So this needs to be taken into consideration because this is the real world experience that we had over the six months. Uh, and also uh, over the last three years now that we had to learn painfully. Next. So basically, the fair matrix, di ba? Yung fair matrix po na nakikita nyo dyan sa pag-aaral natin, fair matrix po yan ang galing kay Akas. So paano po natin nakuha yung fair matrix na yan? Um, the fair matrix is not meant, is meant to be cheaper than four wheels significantly, but it's not meant to replace public transportation. Ang sinasabi ko sa public transportation, uh, mass transit, bus, pati MRT. Ang idea po natin sa pricing, okay, tatlo po yan. One, mass transit consideration. Two, habal-habal existing consideration. And three, alternative to four wheels, taxi or TNC. So it is substantially more cheaper or more affordable than four wheels, but it should not be substantially or it should not be much more, it should not be as affordable as public transportation. Because motorcycle taxis are meant to be an alternative form of transportation, meaning ang pinaka ma pinaka ma taas po namin na uh, customer is three times a week. Right? So, yan po yung talagang gamit niya. Emergency, sobrang traffic, mahaba pila, o kung ano man, di ba? So, kailangan ko, I have to get there and negotiate my way through it. And hopefully, eventually, pag naging perfecto po yung ating public transportation or mass transit system, maging feeder system na lang po si motorsiklo. And feeder system means, hindi na siya point to point. Point to mass transit hub, mass transit hub, to the end point and then from that point to where your final destination is. So feeder system po tayo. So the pricing was benchmarked on two things, no? We, in the beginning of the study, we uh, surveyed 200 Havel Havel terminals. So we found out that yung Havel Havel terminals na yun, um, was, uh, yung Havel Havel, mas mura, mas mahal kami sa Havel Havel by maybe 20%. But then, syempre, yung habal-habal, walang insurance, wala po training, and whatnot. So, the added benefit of the safety, people were willing to pay for the additional payment. And in fact, you know, it's not meant to be that kind of claim because dapat alternative mode of transport lang po siya at hindi po siya ginagamit na talagang pang araw-araw. Although I know, especially last December, marami po sa atin talagang ginagamit na po siya pang araw-araw dahil po sa kalubahan ng traffic. 
Uh, we also did a FGE uh, and a customer survey uh, for this one. No? Uh, I think to those who want, we can share those surveys with you. So, we have a willingness to pay uh, in terms of the surveys that was conducted, which ended up with that type of price matrix. Now, why umaagat ng 50 kilometers, 50 pesos per kilometer, about uh, 7 kilometers? Because it's meant to be for short distances. Okay? Napaka-uncomfortable po ng motor pag, pag long distance na pasahero. Ha? Yung, yung, ikaw yung nagmamotor, masarap po yun. Long distance. Pero pag pasahero po, we discourage that. So 5 kilometers, 7 kilometer distances uh, is encouraged. Yung mahahaba po, nag-significantly nagmamahal po yung fare natin. That is my design. So yun po yung punong dulo ng ating, uh, ating fare matrix. Next. So again, habal uh, habal benchmark and consumer profile. This is meant to be for urgent and infrequent trips, two to three uh, times a week usage. Okay, and for habal habal benchmark, we are around yes, they are around ten to twenty percent cheaper than our cars, but people are willing to pay for the safety factor that is involved in the uh, uh, in the ride for uh, motorcycle pass, the professional motorcycle pass. Next. Okay, so next. Okay, let's talk about dynamic pricing, no? Uh, based on the, so, maraming usapan po ng dynamic pricing. Uh, sa four-wheel, ngayon sa two-wheel, uh, and I wish to sana explain the basis of this dynamic pricing, no? Uh, first of all, yung basihan po ng dynamic pricing ng four-wheel, malayo-malayo sa basihan na two-wheel. Bakit po? Kasi mas mababa yung base pair. Diba? For example po, yung four-wheel is my two, two X um, um, surge. Diba? So let's say yung, yung base mo is 300. Okay? Um, pag mataas yung demand at mababa yung supply, may algorithm po yung app na sinasabi na walang bikers sa daan mababa yung supply. Walang na bikers sa daan, mataas yung demand. So, bibigyan natin ng automatic incentive yung mga bikers. Tataas po yung, yung presyo with a dynamic price uh, uh, multiplier para to encourage the bikers to go out on the streets. Diba? So, nangyayari po ito sa big hours. For example, tinatangad yung biker. Diyos ko, Friday night. Imagine, payday, Friday. Lahat na tayo gusto natin bumibig. Diba? Yung biker, ganun din. Ayaw yung trabaho. Masyadong traffic. Payday, Friday. So, ngayon, pumapasok po yung dynamic pricing na yun to encourage bikers to come out. So, ultimately, this goes to the benefit of the customer because the customer has a higher chances of booking in times when they really need to book for transportation. Now, the problem is, um, this is exacerbated with the four-wheel issues that has nothing to do with two wheels. Now, if you look at it from a two-wheel perspective, ang base po niya maliit. So, ang dynamic pricing ko na recommend, recommended for two wheel is anywhere between 1.3 to 1.5 times. So, 100 pesos po at 1.3, that's an additional 30 pesos. Diba? So two times, sa 300, sa double yan, additional 300. So, malayo po yan. We found out that the market, at least that market, no, which is really meant for alternative mode of transportation. Again, sinasabi ko po yung alternative po, hindi po dapat pang araw-araw. Diba? They are willing to pay the driver an additional 30 pesos or even 50 pesos just so that they can ensure that booking. Because the actual quantum, which is the actual figure itself, isn't that big compared to other forms of transportation. So I would just like to explain this and later on if we can ha have a round of questioning on the dynamic pricing. Yang po ang purpose niya. Diba? So next slide. This is calibrated with feedback. In fact, umabot po kami sa 2.0x dati. Maraming nagreklamo. Right? So, hindi po yan haka-haka lang. Over the last three years, pinaglaro po natin yan in terms of ano yung magiging sweet spot po. Um, pag December, maabot yun ng 1.5, syempre. Pero pag mga regular months naman, you're really looking at about 1.3. Diba? So, if, if your base fare is low enough, it shouldn't really matter that much, especially since you're not using this for daily use. 
And the point is really to push them to other, to mass transit. Diba? Yun yung point natin eh. We, ang point natin is to augment the existing mass transportation. We're not supposed to replace it. We're supposed to augment the build, 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 uh, uh, the build, build, build initiatives of the Duterte administration. Right? Ano tayo eh? Interim. Right? Doon na yun lang, nagagamit siya point to point because maraming construction, maraming development. But eventually, ang talagang masihan niyan or talagang magiging establishing niyan is really uh, alternative mode of transportation. So, this was done with a lot of um, experimentation, a lot of studies, a lot of customer feedback, a lot of pastures of the internet, you know, um, and a lot of consultation also with the customers. Uh, combination po yun ang promo code, na mayroong uh, dynamic pricing, etc. etc. So, hinalaw po namin talaga yan ang tatlong taon. Next. So, if you look at this, no? Yung supply cap mo, may baba na. Supply demand mo. Pag tinanggal niyo po yung dynamic pricing, ano po mangyayari? Mas pumumura yung fares. Ano po nangyayari pag nagpumumukod tayo at nagpumura yung fares? Next slide. Tataas po yung demand. So, pag tumas yung demand, tinanggal po yung surge, tinanggal po yung cap, bumaba yung, uh, bumaba yung uh, uh, supply mo because remember um, the combination between part-timers and full-timers medyo mahihirapan po yung uh, publiko mag-book diba? so sana po uh, we can, again it's a study so pag, pwede natin paglaruan po ito through the course of the study uh, and I believe naman po uh, the LTFRB the uh, technical working group you know, is uh, is amenable, uh, you know, to you know suggestions. And they are, uh, I believe that. And in study na po, maglalaro po natin yan sana po over the next three months. Po ano po yung magiging optimal para po dito sa pasahero. Uh, next slide. So the way we see it, po, based on our experience, de ba? Um, if you put a cap, uh, if you don't want uh, dynamic pricing, then you relax on the cap so that you have more bikers on the road. If you want to lower the cap, then you need to be uh, more uh, lenient on the dynamic pricing so that you incentivize, incentivize the bikers to go out on the road at the right time when they are needed. Um, but if I, 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 I'm afraid if you, take, if you put in the cap and you take out the dynamic pricing, it's good to ma masusuppress po natin yung ating supply that may, may have, may, may, it may, uh, the public may find out that it may be a bit more difficult to book no, when they need to. Uh, and the um, next, and basically that ends the presentation po. Uh, so hopefully po, sana may natutunan kayo doon sa aming uh, uh, presentation. Uh, we hope that the um, yun nga po, yung safety standards that you set up, uh, sana po talaga yun yung maging uh, standard para sa lahat. Um, kunin po talagang uh, pakilipin po natin na mag-push at ma-establish po ito uh, sa batas po natin. Uh, I will be making the same presentation po sa Congreso, sa Senado, as I made to the Technical Working Group. Um, and we hope to, again, no, work together with the government uh, as what we have been doing for the last six months. Uh, we've been in dialogue with the government for almost three years or maybe more than two years now. Um, and our ultimate goal is really to provide an uh, alternative and effective, safe and efficient mode of transportation to the right of public. Pasensya na po sa nangyaring back and forth. I'm sorry um, if this has uh, you know, um, gone up to, different, uh, uh, to a different level of inconvenience to LTFRB, to the OPR, and to the riding public. Please don't uh, mistake um, um, what has happened um, as defiance. We are passionate to serve the public. Um, and with this passion um, and with our experience, um, we hope that um, you know we really get to establish a lot of these safety protocols and learnings and key takeaways, and that we are here ultimately for the right of public. And ang talagang pahay po natin dito is matapos po yung study na magkaroon tayo ng magandang mga datos po yung sa study, whether it's the last six months plus the three months po na binibigay po na extension, at magkaroon tayo ng 
maraming angulo, perspektibo, datos, para ma-present po natin ang maayos sa Kongreso at Senado at magkaroon po tayo ng napakagandang batas na talagang na-test natin sa daan, uh, na-test po natin sa publiko at yung talagang makikinapang ultimately is a riding public while we are generating thousands of jobs um, also to our citizens. So yun lang po, um, again, LPFRB, BOTR, we are here uh, to make the uh, uh, pilot successful with you and the other players. We welcome the other players in the industry and we hope we can work together hand in hand in collaboration for the Filipino people. Thank you very much um, and good day. Yeah. Um, so now we open the floor po for questions. Okay, Salita. Just to be clear, Sir George. So, Sir. No, lakasan ko na lang, Sir. Sir, on an average, daily, daily average um, demand, gano po marami from your consumers, writers? Yung mga sumasaray? Uh, roughly yan, mga 30. Gano. 30? Roughly. Thousand. Yeah, roughly. Peak? Well, Iba -iba eh. Kasi, you, 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 have, you, you can't use December. December is within. So, pagdating mo ng... Okay. Um, uh, ganito yan eh. When you get to the Burr months, it changes eh. So, when you get to January, it also changes. So, it's very seasonal. But you average it out of 30. But then, hindi lang yung 30. It's a Friday, Friday. That's a search siya. Diba? So, average mo ng month, 20, 28 to 30,000. But recorded highest? Uh, uh, maybe closer to 40, I, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. But then, an average was about that. But then, ang, ang demand that we believe, you know, based on the experience that we've had and the research that we've seen on the road, and count mo na lang, di ba? When you go to the road, ilan yung atas versus ilan yung habal-habal. Medyo umabot tayo ng mga two. Ang bilik po na namin the market, in Metro Manila alone, is already 200,000 per day. Yeah, but, but nasa 30 lang yung demand niyo on the average. Pero yung supply niyo on an average, gano'n parang? So you talk about 85,000, uh, 3 to 5,000 on the road, thereabouts. So hirap din talaga ngayon? Yeah, kasi na part-time. Yung talaga, I need to stress out, no? The cap is not 100%. I mean, like, not the, the pool of bikers that you have is not 100%. You know, masaya ka na sa 10% na sa road. Masaya ka na doon. So, and again, iba iba po yan. Iba ang Sunday, iba yung Monday, iba yung Friday, iba yung morning and afternoon peak. So, it's a little bit more complicated. Yes, go ahead. Sa dynamic pricing, may search pricing pa rin ba? Pinatuto pa na ang account. Sir, uh, ma'am, we will comply with the, uh, we will comply with the, uh, with the regulators on taking out the, the search price. Pero meron tayo the past few months. So we were we were studying it, no? Um, and syempre, iba po kasi dapat, humingi po kami ng pasensya sa, sa LTFRB kasi meron, sana po bigat po ng transition si Akas. We're not asking for special favors, pero nauna naman po talaga si Akas running for six months. Eh. So we really hope that there's a transition period on how we transition our fleet to the new guidelines. So we will be, you know, complying on the search pricing uh, 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 as stated by the DOD. When will you start uh, charging? Today. 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 Um, study uh, uh, once a uh, law is uh, is already out. Given that you have uh, violated the uh, um, some part of the guidelines, including you operating outside Metro Manila and Cebu. So any question? So your take on that? Did you really violate the guidelines? Did you really operate sa CTO? Did you really? So first, uh, sa blacklisting, no? I think um, you know again. Uh, there's been many back and forths, many words have been said through the media and through our proclamations between one side to the next. I just like to reiterate, hindi po to away ng angkas at ng gobyerno, hindi po to away ng LTFRB ang angkas. Pareho po tayo pakay, 
Minsan po, nakakaroon po tayo ng differences of opinion and perspectives, but at the end of the day, the ultimate goal is really to provide an efficient and affordable transport, alternative mode of transportation for the Filipino people. So in terms of the blacklisting, we hope to work with the LDRB to ensure that we are, um, you know, not put in that position, uh, and that we get to continue in providing a service to the study and more data to the study, because I think that the experience that we have over the last two years is valuable. In terms of, uh, of the operations outside, um, you know, we've stopped operations both in uh, Gensa and CBO. And, you know, uh, on the question on uh, the, the, ordi the local ordinance uh, conflicting with national laws, I, I don't think I'm in a position to have an uh, opinion on that. No? That is a matter that's left to be uh, uh, left to be resolved by the courts if such, such thing happens, all of these conflicting rules. But then again, um, we have uh, complied. Um, there are no operations in CDO and Jetsan. Uh, but we hope we can still run our Padala service since wala na po talaga uh, restrictions on that. No? Uh, but then, in the meantime, um, focus po tayo sa Metro Manila and Metro Cebu. Okay, see si Gerard and then um, si Aris. Okay. Okay. Hi, sir. And um, I'd like to add, lang, no? so we are, uh, you know, working with uh, you know the the, the drivers pop um, in those areas to make sure that you know uh, we help them out in this uh, time of need. So uh, you know, uh, you know, again, pasensya sa lahat, marami po factors to, and we hope that at the end of the day uh, we get to uh, make sure that everybody is okay. Yes, your question. Hi, sir. Good morning. Gerard de la Peña from TV5. Um, how did you feel about hearing yung misinabi ni uh, Mr. Swan Singh that you are bullying the government and that you are going to be uh, possibly going to be blacklisted? How did you feel about hearing that? That mayroon ako dito ng alawang bullying. You got it. Chi chi. Okay. Um. Like, again, I said, no, uh, we've been operating for about three years. We've been really fighting for the rights of the motorcycle taxi bikers, the motorcycle industry in general, and also the alternative uh, options of the permitting public. Hindi ka po ako mag-isa dyan. Marami pong organization na tayo mag-asama, civil society groups, computer groups. Um, let us, you know, again, I, ako po humingi ng pasensya dun sa um, uh, na, na, nasabi pong defiance po or bullying wherein we are just being very passionate in what we are trying to do to help the Filipino people and our bikers. But it has always been our intention to comply. Uh, and in fact, we thought the Department of Transportation in the Rail and Secretary to God for having the foresight no, amongst so many administration in fact, bago po natin napasa yung sa lower house yung ang Casville um, last year, uh, last last year, uh, last last year. It's been you know three congresses that they've been trying to push that, and we know that the RA for what we six is an antiquated kalesa law, and this administration had the you know the, the foresight um, to really listen to the public and create a technical working group. Ayaw po natin siya ngayon. Uh, ayaw, you know, wala pong, wala pong nagiging positibo sa away. Uh, and we may have our differences, but we should resolve those differences for the benefit of the public. Uh, we are not, may, we do not need to bully anyone. We do not need we bully anyone. I don't think a company like Angkas can bully any, you know, such a, you know, uh, the government in any way whatsoever. Uh, but we have always been passionate, you know, to push uh, for the agenda of the commuting public and our uh, motorcycle bikers to give them the dignity that they deserve all these years. And we will continue to do so. Um, but again, let us not take away the fact that we have been working with government and we will continue to work with government to resolve these issues. Sarah. I'm in my 
really takes uh, for a real man to say sorry, no? We would be several times apologizing for, you know, the really what happened uh, between the past and the year party. Yeah. Uh, and suggestion mo for the animosity between the past and the government authorities to subside or more time. Sa akin po, I will do whatever it takes para po sa publiko. Kasi lahat po itong ginagawa natin is bigger than ang CAS. Hindi po ito issue ni ang CAS at ang LDFRB. This is bigger than ang CAS and LDFRB. There are thousands of lives at stake. Uh, thousands of commuters that rely on this on a daily basis. And let's not let them down because of misunderstandings. Let's move forward and move past these issues. Because ultimately, we all want the same thing. I believe firmly in my heart that an LTFRB, the DOTR, wants only the best for the riding public. Kami din po, we want the best for the riding public. And, you know, we, um, what we are confident that with the Duterte administration, that the riding public will get a fair shake. Um, in terms of passing these regulations. Excited po kami. Excited kami to pass the regulations. Um, excited po kami with this three-month report. And I know, itong taon na po ito, 2020, this is gonna be the year of the motorcycle. Pwede na ba ako mag-joke? Hindi ba rin? Okay, gayin mo na lang po sa Tentic. Board Manasha po. Natanong ko lang, ano yung support na ay bibigay nyo dun sa mga na-apprehend? Tsaka di ba nagkaroon ng uh, statement ang, ang PWG na uh, yung hindi kasama dun sa 10,000 na kap, eh bubuligin. So anong support ang pwede nyo bibigay dun sa mga drivers? Well, I think we can find a way to work that out. No? In fact, LTFRB has also announced that you know whatever is left in the cap, um, can be uh, redistributed back to those with the operational capacity. No? So those are the things that we can work out. Um, we're receptive um, to anything that we can do to help that. Um, and in fact, sabi nga po ni General Garciola, until March 23, we're talking about two months. Um, sana po, this is just one of those uh, challenges uh, in the journey or the development of the study to the ultimate uh, 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 legitimization of motorcycle taxi operations. Um, again, you know, my bikers have been with us for three years. This is not new. And um, it's not new. So, alam po nila yung pinasukan nila. In fact, alam naman po nila yung gagawin nila pag wala silang magagawa, babalik sila sa habal-habal. Unfortunately, but, sa, but at least meron na po silang mindset on safety. And sana po na-improve na po natin yung kanilang pa, 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 pamakalakad po ng kanilang operasyon. But then, alam po naman po na once we get ako na kaya po natin solusyonan yan together with the government. I don't have anything specific for you right now, but we are willing to work with the government to find a way together on how we can figure it out. Thank you, George. Uh, Jen? from ABS-CBN. Sir, uh, si Asik Swansea na dami na rin sinasabi earlier this morning and they were checking your records daw with the SEC and that ang CAS is 99% foreign owned by the Singaporean. So, that you're violating the uh, foreign cap. What are your thoughts about it, sir? And sabi nyo mga, you want to move forward. What are the immediate steps for ang CAS? So, so I own 60% of the company. So, syempre before we were back then, years ago, alam ko lang pang regulation ng this, no? Everything was an app. Diba? Sa app naman, walang ganong klaseng restriction. This was taken up already during the Senate hearings and the congressional hearings. And we've already uh, made the necessary steps to correct this, no? So, um, I, I am uh, here before you uh, saying that I own 60%. That will be reflected. Um, I mean, my land as yet yeah, from the time that uh, um, that's uh, corrected and reflected. No, um, again, I had a joke on this during the Senate hearing, but I will not say that joke um, in reference to my team um, because this is a serious matter. But then, in compliance with the nationality requirement, um, 
um, for the uh, uh, eventual passage of the law. Because uh, right now, wala naman po sa guidelines yun eh. Both the original guidelines and the new guidelines um, that was not put as part of the requirements. Uh, but then we know that the people that are not as good as they are, they are not as good So that has been rectified already. What's your plans? Sorry, immediate plans to move forward? Meeting po with the LTFRB. Okay, Gilbert. And then let's go back.